I'm hanging out with you too much. Our, our minds are starting to become one. They are becoming one. I need to move <laughs> far away. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, Nick will be moving to Mexico. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another edition of Popcorn Bucket List, the show that uh, talks about neither popcorn or buckets, but we do have a lot of lists. We do have a popcorn stand, we do have though. A, we do a have a machine. Yeah, we should use that sometime. We should. No, I want popcorn. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah. But uh, before we move into the weekly preview of everything and talking some movies, we haven't done a Ryan's Challenge in a while. Um so let's see what sort of uh, what's uh, what's the prize here. Or are we gonna kind of leave that? We're we're kind of debating on what it should be. Yes, Might let's be a bigger just prize, say maybe. it may or may not involve some tickets, maybe, or maybe some popcorn buckets. But we'll find out. Or all the above. That's right. Kind of thing. If you win, you'll find out. That's true. That's the easiest <laughs> way to find out. Win. So uh, let them know what's uh, what's the question for today. So the question for today is, it will relate back later, I'm not going to tell you how, but what year and what venue did Mike Tyson bite somebody's ear off at? So we need the venue and the year and whose ear he bit off. Not the whole ear, just a little bit, but check it out. What are you doing over there, buddy? What? Oh, oh you're done. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> That's right. You can still see me, even though <laughs> I switched the cameras different. I was, I just, I just had the need for speed, man. Oh, just, it, it was the speed. The I love the speed. All right. <laughs> just so happened to be his chin. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting question. Like you said, a little foreshadowing for later on Ooh. in the episode. But uh, let's just move straight into the weekly preview. Why? Because we got a lot to talk about. This is the most we've had to talk about in a while. I would say on Friday, September sixteenth, right off the bat, the woman. King coming straight to theaters, Viola Davis movie, and she kicks all the butt in this movie. I'm trying to keep it PG here for all the kids watching <laughs> and everything. Um, as far as I could tell, based on some real life events, uh, it kind of implies like maybe it's just kind of a few different stories that happened around Africa at this time, and they're kind of combining it into this mm -hmm. one sort of narrative here. But uh, don't get this movie confused with Black Panther 2, correct? Even though it looks a lot like Black Panther 2. It does. I, I'm not going to lie. The first time I watched the trailer, it was on TV in the background, and I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, especially with the passing of Chadwick Boseman, it was like, oh, his sister's maybe going to lead, and then it comes, you hear Woman King, and it just kind of like mm -hmm. a lot of boxes, like both are checked there. Yeah. And um, this could very well be the prequel to the Dormalaji from Black Panther. But I, I, yeah. I think it I think it's an attest to the Black Panther movie. They're kind of taking from this real life event as well. Mm -hmm. the, the culture and the, the fighting styles and everything that was yeah. going on. They use that as inspiration for this fictional universe based off this uh, real, real universe, events. which yeah. uh, art imitates life. Life imitates art. Makes sense to me. Yeah, I think it's going to be really good, really mm -hmm. action-y, mm -hmm. um, and I like Viola Davis a lot. I, have we seen Viola Davis in, like, an action role herself? Like, she's been in the Suicide Squad movies, so she's yep. been in action movies. Ha, is this the... F I can't... She was in Widows, which yep. was, like, a heist, bank heist thing, but I can't remember if she did a lot of the fighting. So this yeah. might be kind of a new territory for her, which is really great to see, I think. Mm-hmm. Also coming out that same weekend, See How They Run, also coming to theaters. A murder has occurred at a British theater set in the 1950s. Uh, basically picture an Agatha Christie murder mystery, but funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it gave me a lot of like uh, the uh, Jacques Cousteau kind of mystery where yeah. they like murder on the Orient Express kind of thing, but it's murder in a, in a, theater. In a theater. But they're like, they're trying to be funny, you know. Yeah. Sasha Ronan's in this. She's kind of like the rookie. It, she kind of comes off as like the rookie energetic. She's, she, like, wants to arrest everyone. She's, like, immediately like, you're under arrest. You, you, you just said you did it. Yeah. It's like, no, no, I just said, like, I'm here. Like, I, I, I did the thing you asked me to do earlier or whatever. Like, 
Oh, I wasn't confessing to it or whatever. Yeah. Sam Rockwell plays, I guess, the grizzled older grizzled mentor old detective. It's this is this is Lethal Weapon, but with British. <laughs> <laughs> you got the grizzled guy, you know that that whole yep. dynamic, and you got the Shtick. young up and comer. Yeah, yeah. It looks funny. It looks good. Has a great cast. Um, I think it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. I just hope the the mystery stacks up. This movie yeah. could be as funny and as well acted as it can be, but it's all going to fall apart if the mystery doesn't make sense. Yep. And that is one of the toughest parts of doing mystery movies. Because I feel like that's kind of where um, Death on the Nile, the most recent um, Jacques Cousteau movie, kind of fell apart for me was I was kind of on board. I kind of liked the characters. I liked everything he was doing. And then when it kind of revealed the mystery and he does the whole explaining how I solved it, and I was like, oh, that's not... It's yeah. not as impressive as I thought it was going to yeah. be. It kind of left a little to be desired. The murder, murder on the Orient Express was great at that, I thought. I thought that whole unraveling of the mystery was great. A lot better than Death on the Nile. But also coming out that same weekend, also in theaters, is Pearl. Uh, this is an interesting one. An anthology prequel to the horror movie X. Yes. X came out this same year. And they've already got the prequel movie made and produced in the same year. Even if this movie isn't good, I am so impressed and I can respect the quick turnaround of like yeah. seeing, okay, this is where we can go next and like, let's just do it. And they did it and they yep. got it out right away. And I'm, I'm super excited for this. And, and I say anthology prequel because the actress, uh, Mia Goth, who is in the original X, she plays the younger version of a different character from that movie. Did I say that right? This is, follow me on this, you know, get the boards ready, start getting ready to draw it out and everything, get the strings out, all the whiteboard stuff. Okay, so Mia Goth in X played the young actress who wanted to be a star. Yep. In X, there was an elderly woman who ended up killing most of the people. Spoiler alert, sorry. <laughs> um, in this movie, Mia Goth is playing the older woman in her younger years. So, yep. like, this is set in, like, it looked like 30s, 40s, something yeah, like that. Yeah, somewhere in there. Um, they got the pictures. Yeah, they got, yeah, we're going to be, a, we're going to make you a star. We're going to make you yeah. a star. So, yeah, she's, she's now <laughs> essentially playing the character that killed all her friends <laughs> later on. So, yeah. that's a little, that's a little trippy, but. So that's pretty much everything coming out in the theaters. Let's move into some of the streaming service movies here. Uh, Netflix uh, coming out with a few showings here. First one, we're going to talk about Do Revenge. Uh, right off the bat, not the best title. Yeah, kind of a weird title. And they make fun of it in the trailer. They yeah. kind of say, is that even proper grammar? That doesn't no. just... If you Okay. <laughs> I'm si Look, it was funny at first movies if you point out the, the silly oddities or the mis... The, continuity errors of your movie it was cute at first it's starting to get annoying yep. cut it out yep because you acknowledge it's bad grammar means you knew and you were too lazy to fix it just had to get it off my chest <laughs> but uh this is a teenage dark comedy where basically two separate high school girls uh get ruined socially by their peers uh so they essentially team up to get revenge on the other's uh enemy uh, I'm just gonna place money on it right now. Someone's gonna end up dying by the end of this. Yep, someone's I gonna end up dead so too. Something bad's gonna, or one of them is like, "Ooh, actually, I like that person," and they're gonna get. I together. think I think both are gonna happen. Think so? I think I think the two girls are gonna end up together or something. But I think I think someone's gonna end up dying. I'm not gonna say it's gonna end up being on purpose, but someone's gonna end up dying because both of them joke about like taking their revenge too far on yeah, the other and like both of them are like kind of creeped out by the other and it's like the second time it happens when the other girl does it and she's like I want to kill him and she's like whoa like and I'm like no you can't you can't react like that you said something creepier like yeah. a minute ago yeah. in this trailer you can't judge her you said the same thing <laughs> that's hypocritical i hate hypocrites <laughs> But well, who knows? Maybe they're they're backwards. Maybe in the film, that one said first, and then the other "I'll kill him" is said second. That's fair. That's fair. Who knows? We'll have to wait and yeah, see. We'll have to wait and see on that one. Also coming out on Netflix, we got "Drifting Home." This is an anime where six kids are stranded on an abandoned apartment complex that's floating on the sea. 
Oh, also, there's like some supernatural mystery going on too. But the, yes, the trailer kind of like throws that in at the last second. I feel like yeah, like the last little tagline at the end is like, "Ooh, there's a special mystery with the apartment complex." And why are there giant apartment complexes floating around at sea? I think that has to do with the supernatural element. Okay, because that was interesting. Yeah, I'd never seen that before. But uh, yeah, I don't really know what uh, what much more to say with this one. Uh, yeah. It's a yeah, it's an apartment complex floating in the sea. It takes uh, moving to a whole new level. Ho <laughs> ho! That wasn't that beach funny. Beachside property. <laughs> beachfront or oceanfront if, property. If your Ocean property view. isn't beachfront property, you make it beachfront That's property. Right. Real Estate 101. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. What's up? Today we're talking about CEC movie theaters. They are still around, making popcorn, fresh ices, candy. They got the Reese's back. They might be gone by now, but they are back for a little bit. We got some Reese's pretzels. We got everything you can imagine. So stop on by. They're open every day. Go online, check out their show times, see what kind of deals they have. Maybe there's a little R&R combo there for you. So check it out. Say hi. Talk to the staff. Tell them we sent you. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Also coming out on Netflix, like I said, big lineup for Netflix this weekend. I used to be famous. The guy who tried to kill Deadpool used to be in a boy band. You said last week, don't be in boy bands. They'd mess don't up your mind and everything. Uh, maybe it leads to this. It leads to you trying to kill an immortal self-healing superhero, I guess. Um, nope. this, he's then failed at that venture. He tried to be in a boy band that didn't work mm-hmm. out. Now he's on his own. He's trying to build up his solo career. He is kind of doing some street performing or whatever. He's just playing on his keyboard. All of a sudden this kid with drumsticks, he starts kind of playing with them and it works and yeah. it, they work well together and the crowd loves it. Uh, the boy has, uh, autism, uh, the character, I should say the, the actor, I tried to look this up. I don't believe he has autism, but he has, I think it was called neurodiversity in his brain, which isn't. I'm not. A, I'm not a medical professional, so I apologize if <laughs> you I'm are not this a wrong. PhD. I, I would just want to point it out there. I do not have a medical PhD, so for those of you who have asked me for medical advice and it did not work out well, I am not liable. But from what I understood, just from the little bit of googling, it's not quite autism, but it has autism symptoms i guess and like some people are debating like it should be considered part of that some people are saying well it's not quite or it's a whole thing on the internet but and we're not doctors and we're not doctors (laughs) so again if i got any of that wrong i'm here to talk about the movie i don't know (laughs) don't don't come after me um anyway so basically uh the 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 character has autism so it, it it's this he's trying to become famous again he's kind of thinking like hey I can kind of, he doesn't mean to. I, I like to call this the accidental antagonist. Yep. Where they they end up being kind of the antagonist in the movie, but they don't mean to. I, he's not, like, using the kid in that, like, a nefarious, like, oh, I'm going to just use this kid, whatever. No, throw he's him using stuff. him because they work well together. Yeah. And he wants to get famous again. And this kid can help him through his music playing. But the, the downside is... He doesn't realize he's just he's not really thinking of him. Yeah, when he's like bringing him to these concerts and these gigs or whatever, he's not like thinking it through. Mm-hmm. Um, so it 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 kind of deals with like okay, at what point is the price of fame and all this other stuff. So also coming out that same weekend, Amazon Prime is releasing Good Night Mommy. It is a horror movie remake, uh, Austrian film, I, I believe, believe it was. Yep, um, so. basically. Twin boys return home after their mom had an, uh, it's kind of implied some sort of accident where she needed facial reconstruction surgery. So she's wearing like this mask while she heals up uh, uh, as she's, you know, taking care of her boys. Uh, The kids suspect that this might not be their mom. She's acting a little differently. And, and and it's, it's a, yeah, it's an uh, unsettling movie. Um, cause it also made me think like, you know, if when I was younger and my mom had reconstructive surgery and I couldn't see her face ever, that would, 
that's just unsettling. It's just an unsettling full image. It, she's wearing yeah. like a full ski mask, like yeah. a robber. And yeah, it's like a it's not like a black ski mask where yeah. like usually you see the cartoonish robbers. But it's like, whatever. but still, like yeah. And then yes, yeah, the way she is acting. If yeah. I were these boys and that was my mom, I don't care if she actually yeah. was my mom. I don't want her to be my mom anymore. Yeah, and especially she's like I dancing think, in the mirror. It's like I, I don't happening? know what the accent was from, but if I had to guess. I would guess that Homelander lasered her with the eyes, and that's what caused the accident. Because you mentioned one of the kids. I, I didn't catch this, but one of the, the boys, the twin boys, is plays Homelander's son in The in Boys. The boys. Yep. And as far as I'm concerned, this mom is done for. You're She's done. done. No chance. It, and it, you're, no chance. you're hiding Homelander's boy from him? She's oh, dead. boy. She's dead. Oh, boy. It's, it's over. Game yeah. over, man. <laughs> Game over, man. You got lucky Game once. Over. You got lucky once and escaped, but then you had to it's have not plastic happening again. surgery. It's not happening again. They've been trying to take that guy down for three seasons, and yeah. nothing. he's gotten not stronger. Happening. He's gotten better. <laughs> he's gotten scarier, and now the sun is too. Yes, he's. It's over with. But let's move into some number one recommends. Talk about some of the things we've watched recently, uh, Mr. Meyerberg. I will let you go first because I think I went first last week. Perfect. So first, I'm going to uh, do this. We didn't plan for that. I don't know what that did. That's Mike Tyson knocking people out. Okay. So for my pick, I'm picking Mike, the documentary series, uh, dramatized documentary series on Mike Tyson's life. Looks like I watched just the first episode. It's great. Um, Really talks about his backstory growing up, not just him as a fighter, but more everything else that's happened in his life because he's had a pretty crazy life. Um, But I first really started liking Mike Tyson after the Mike Tyson Mysteries show. Absolutely fantastic show. Um, And then I really started looking more about him, and he's a fascinating guy. But uh, definitely check the definitely check it out. Um, and I can't remember the actor's name off the top of my head that plays him, but he's jacked. He is ready to go. He he doing a great part. And the lisp he he plays Mike Tyson's lisp very well, very well. So Mike Hulu, check it out. I got a chance to. Uh, we talked a little bit about a movie that was kind of going to select theaters in the area here. Uh, Hockey Land. I got a chance to watch that documentary uh, last weekend. I thought it was a really good documentary. The thing I love about sports in general is, regardless what you think, there is no good guy or bad guy. It's all perspective. It's whatever team you're cheering for. Mm -hmm. I can say the Packers are the worst human beings on the planet, and I am saying that. But that's all (laughs) perspective on my part. Here you have these two teams who I have no real affiliation with, and so it's... It's basically just me choosing, like, who's the good guy and the bad guy, as it would be watching an actual sport, um, which I think is really interesting. And I really wish more sports documentaries and sports movies did that more and more is actually leave it more up to the audience member to decide who's the protagonist, who's the antagonist, instead Mm -hmm. of, like, sports movies, like, giving you a cartoonish villain for the opposing team, like, make you cheer for this team because this is the team we want you to cheer for. No, it's sports. It's all a matter of perspective, and I think this documentary, that's one of the strongest aspects of it for me personally. So that's what I uh, checked out. Two sports things we've recommended yeah. here. You know, it, It's weird. We never plan our number one recommends, but sometimes they'll just line up. We'll do like two documentaries in the same week. You know, We got two sports things going on this week. I'm hanging out with you too much. Our, our minds are starting to become one. They are becoming one. I need to move <laughs> far away. <Yeah. laughs> In other news, Nick will be moving to Mexico. <laughs> uh, that's going to do it for us here on this episode of Popcorn Bucket List. Let us know what you've been watching, uh, whether on the street, in the comments of the video, however you see fit. If you have a guess for Ryan's challenge, you must post that in the comment section of the YouTube video. First one to post it there wins the big the prize. prize. The big prize. Feels like an episode of Community where, like, early on they did paintball. <laughs> and they're like, they just called it the big prize. And they didn't tell anyone. <laughs> and then it ended up being, like, the biggest thing ever. But then he's like, I couldn't promise that. So here's the DVD player with Blu-ray. <laughs> Uh, But for myself and Ryan Marburg, we'd like to thank you so much for watching, and we will see you at the movies.